that Demetrius Johnson fight, you know, it, it just didn't seem like I really wanted to work itself out. Um, so I feel like the next biggest hyped up fight was, was Cody. You know? um, one that kind of made the most sense for, uh, for the attention. You know? I mean, it just, um, I don't know, there was, there was a lot of drama behind it, so uh, I went back, you know. What was, what was kind of the obstacle in the way of that, that DJ fight? It seemed like not only did, did you guys want it, but it seemed like the fans were kind of behind it, Dana was kind of behind it, and now, and maybe it will happen someday, but why, why isn't it happening now? You know, I, I don't really know. I mean, I think that's a good question for Demetrius Johnson. You know? um, maybe he wanted some guaranteed money. Um, maybe he wasn't willing to gamble on himself on the pay-per-view numbers. But uh, as far as I was concerned, the fans wanted it, the UFC wanted it, everyone knows I wanted it. Um, you know, I respect Mr. Johnson as a person and as an athlete, and that's kind of why I was chasing him down. He's got that target on his back, you know, he's got that pound for spot that uh, I want to come in and take, you know, and uh, not only not only to, to make the big bucks and on a big fight, but to uh, create a legacy, you know, I mean, chase, chasing that spot down. Um, so really, I think it's a question for him why, why, why it didn't really happen, and now it's kind of uh, crazy we'll be on the same card. <laughs> You went through um, like all of last year kind of dealing with Cody, from yeah. the fighter, and his injury got off the fight in the summer, then that was in November, so that, I'm sure that was exhausting, and then you went and you and you beat him, so everyone thought, okay, you know, you went through all that, you won the title back, you knocked out, you're your big rival, and then you move on. Yeah, yeah. How, how will it be difficult to kind of get up for this again, because you just did it, you went through all of last year kind of getting exhausted by the rivalry, uh, is, is it going to be hard? No, man, I, I love getting rich for knocking Cody out. <laughs> it's great, man. I mean, really, it's uh, it's a lot different this time. You know, you can't you can't be uh, can't be such a jerk. You just got finished. You know, it's, it's a little bit different. So, um, no, man. But for as much crap as he talked to, he deserves you his ass kicked. Is is the DJ fight still one that you want after this? That's still on your mind. I definitely. Want it. Yeah, I mean, he he's got that spot. You know, I'm looking looking to take it. So. We both got our uh, our uh, fights ahead of us that we got to worry about, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about it in the after fight. You know, um, it's interesting. A lot of people have complained in the past that some of the lighter weight classes don't get enough attention because maybe there haven't been these great rivalries. Mm -hmm. So in a way, though, aren't you and Cody kind of doing a great service for your weight class? I mean, the fact that you guys have brought some heat to it. Yeah, man. Not not only I mean our weight class is stacked. We got some. We got we got a great weight class. But not only just our weight classes, small weight classes in general, have been getting more of the attention. You know, it's. Uh, I think the fans have become a little more well knowledge uh, of the sport. Um, I think the small weight classes. I've always said from the beginning are, are more exciting. You know, I think people are just finally picking up on that. And the rivalry, do, the rivalry does help as well. Yeah, please don't think I don't think the talent is deep because yeah. it definitely is. We know that. Um, but. I'm curious for you. Uh, has it been harder to get up and get excited to fight him a second time? No, nah, not at all. Not at all. I mean, defending your belt is all you need to get to get motivated. You know, I'm um, one of those guys that always have to be pulled back from being in the gym too much. So uh, I'll always be motivated to continue to get better and to uh, continue holding this belt. You know, I've lost it once and I wasn't happy about it. You know, so I'm never gonna let it happen again. Yeah, does that bother you at all? Because you were really campaigning for a rematch, and you never got it, and yeah. then here it comes, and he gets a rematch right away. That, I mean, that is a little frustrating, you know, like to go and lose a fight that you don't think you lost, other people don't think you lost, a split decision, not get the rematch, and then, you know, Cody gets knocked out and gets the rematch. But, like I said, I think it's, uh, it, it's a great fight for me, so it, it makes the most sense. And you really had fun with the um, the snake logo yeah, yeah. Uh, and everything. So I'm curious, you know, when did it ever bother you that the snake and the grass stuff? And when did you decide to flip the script and 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 own it, basically? Kind of had to instantly flip the script, you know. <laughs> I mean, it it came on so fast. I mean, anything Connor says is like gold now, you know. So you just got to flip it instantly. But um, and it, that never really bothered me. I think just the. Uh, just all the the lies and the, the crap about it is what really bothered me you know like knowing like deep down the truth of what, what really has gone down you know i mean you continue to see it 
at that camp of what's going on. I mean, Justin Buckles is now kicked out of the gym. It's going to be a recurring thing that the coaches are going to keep following their way out of that gym, you know, and it's not the coaches. So it'll it all come about. If it's not the coaches, it's the... <laughs> it's the man in charge. Yeah. But you've been a little bit of a nomad for gy in gyms, in terms of gyms lately. Yeah. Um, and you're doing a lot at Ruka with Jason Perillo. So mm -hmm. what is it about him uh, that attracted you to, to, to training with him? Uh, Perillo is a great uh, MMA boxing coach. You know, a great boxing coach for MMA. You know, he understands the distance. He's done a good job. I've worked with him. But we started our own gym called the Training Lab in Anaheim. So that's kind of like my home base as well as I still live in Colorado. So Dwayne's right now flying out every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to be in my camp out here in Anaheim. Um, and I'm still still with Dwayne Ludwig out in Colorado as well too, but I'm one of those guys that's gonna learn from the best and travel and learn from as much as I possibly can because that's the only way I'm gonna get better. If I, stick, if I strictly stick to Dwayne and only do what me and him are gonna be doing, even though we're still evolving, you're still gonna be held back, you know? So I feel a new set of eyes, um, the distance is different with Perillo, his, his striking's a little bit different, you know, like, he's got stuff to teach. Just like my jiu-jitsu, you know, I'm going, working with Felipe Del Monica at uh, Gracie Baja. You know, I brought in Daryl for my wrestling. Mark Munoz is one of my coaches now too. So I have, I got a lot of coaches in my corner. It's, uh, it's a great, great problem to have. Who's actually gonna be in the corner though? <laughs> I'll uh, send my last fight. Send my last fight. It would be uh, Dwayne, Felipe, Daryl, and my brother. Yeah. My brother's always there. He's been my number one supporter. He's the one that, as well as Mark Munoz, got me into the sport. So he'll always be there. And was it something that you you determined really too that to take it to the next level, you needed more attention on you, like that kind of a la carte training just specifically for you? Because a lot of people still argue, oh, you should be in a big gym with a bunch of other talent because that iron sharpens iron. Um, I do agree with that as well too. I mean, you got to have everything. You got to have that as well as a specific training with just your coach, you know. Um, and that's kind of what we created. Um, so I met a new coach, Sam Calavita. He's my strength conditioning coach, uh, nutritionist, uh, just a mad scientist with how the body works. And uh, the gains I've seen from working with him have been unreal. I've been competing since I was eight years old, and um, He's done some wonderful things with my body and the way my, my cardio and my strength, just my body composition in general. I mean, switched my lifestyle up. I met him when I was coaching Ultimate Fighter. Um, Juan Archuleta brought him in to kind of run through some of the guys. And so once I met him, I came out of Southern California and decided to build a camp around that. You know, and I'm from California, just had a kid, so I'm back around family. It just all these things kind of lined up and just kind of happened, you know. And so we are creating that. Iron Sharpens Iron, we got Cub Swanson in our camp, we got Warren Archuleta, Aaron Pico, um, Ellenberg, we got a lot of guys that are coming in and, and, and training with us, as well as creating that environment of having more coaches than anything, you know? Um, all, the, all, the, all the coaches I've listed, all those guys are getting better from them coaching as well too, so. So how do you beat Cody again then, same way? Yeah, I definitely can, you know, I think there's a lot of holes I didn't show as well too in this game, that I finished in the second round and, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm better everywhere, so it's the thing I can take the fight in any direction to win this fight. Um, and I still, I still believe those same openings will be there. So I don't think he's as an intelligent fighter to switch up what he does. He did drop in the first round, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So what did you, what did you do wrong to allow that to happen? Played a little bit into his game, you know. Um, but I also beat him in his game too, you know. It, it's, it's. Um, I, I took his best punch, coming forward, coming into it, and I was able to bounce back from it. So. One of those things that I see his best weapon, I was able to come back, so um, just be ready. Is the personal club with him still there, or was that now over after the last one? You know, it never really was personal with me and him. Like, I never, like, had a personal, I mean, it became, it became personal by the attacks and stuff, you know, but I don't have a hate for the guy. Um, I do love beating him, you know, because he likes to run his mouth, I and mean, the more you run it, in your mouth it's going to be that more enjoyable to beat you you know but I never had like it wasn't like I was chasing this drama I was getting away from it I moved to Colorado and it followed me so do you Not think sure. it'll all come back or is there any fight we'll be able to see some of the, some of the guys again from out we'll come back it's just kind of that those weird feelings you know we'll I mean, see some of the coaches and everything or I uh, I think that, that's all kind of withered its way out as well too, you know. I think the ones that bothered me the most were Justin Buckles, and he's because he's really he was a real good friend of mine when he was there, you know. And uh, he's not even there anymore, you know. Uh, showed some problems that were going on there. Um, so I think I think it's behind me, you know. Have you spoken to Justin since he left? A little bit, a little bit yeah. here and there, but you know, it's it's uh, 
you get cross the line with some things, it, it's hard to bring him in, you know? I mean, he's a great coach. I'd love to have him at my camp. You know, I, I wish he wouldn't have crossed the line the way he did because I think he'd be a great guy to bring into my gym as well, you know? But it's uh, one of those things that I felt like, uh, I don't know, man. Like, the disrespect he had for Dwayne as well as myself, it's hard to forgive him for it, you know? I'm not sure if you heard, but Dominic Cruz actually picked you to win uh, yeah. the rematch. So I'm curious about your reaction to a guy that you uh, you fought before and his arrival of yours. He's a him. smart man. <laughs> He's good at picking apart fights. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, I'm picking myself to win as well, too. So I, I'm not surprised by it. And UFC kind of announced that they're going to start bringing in, you know, replacement guys just in, people, in case people can't make weight. You're actually someone who kind of benefited from that once, uh, you know, when Joe Soto kind of filled mm -hmm. in last minute when Brown hit his head. Who do you think should be the replacement fighter for this fight in case? You know, That's a good question, man. I mean, whoever, whoever's healthy at the time. I mean, we got a great weight class. You know, we got Mariah, so just knocked out Rivera. Looked impressive. Uh, Cruz unfortunately hasn't fought since since uh, Cody, but he's always there too. Um, we got a deep weight class, so there will always be someone, you know? You've won the belt twice now. Can you explain some of the differences between winning it the first time and winning it the second time, and maybe which one is, you know, more, maybe not more special to you, but, you know, how they... How they uh, there's definitely one that's more special. I mean, it'll never be beating Burrell the first time, you know, winning the belt and proving everyone that who I was and the, how good I was, you know? Um, and I kind of felt that I was champion the whole time. I, even though, like, all the, all the stuff, I always told myself that I was still defending my belt. Every time I went out there to fight, I fought, I was fighting a Sinsat, you know? The number one ranked guy, I'm defending my belt. I'm fighting Lineker, number one ranked guy, I'm defending my belt. So in my mindset, I, I just kind of kept it that way, you know? So, obviously beating Cody w w was a great thing, um, but that was more because of the rivalry and all the, the drama that was going on behind it. Nothing will ever top beating Burrell. You were 28 when you won the belt, and mm -hmm. by contrast, Cody was 25, which is around the time that you were on the Ultimate Fighter. Mm -hmm. Having had that experience to kind of grow and mature, do you think maybe that was a little bit too much too soon for someone like Cody, being young and winning the belt? Not really. You know, it's just the fact that I didn't start fighting until I was 24. You know, I didn't even, I didn't even know how, learn how to throw a punch until I graduated college. So I think it's just a different, I mean, the sport's so popular now that kids can train it at a younger age, you know? Um, for me, it was more important for me to get through school first. And it's just a different time in life. I'm glad that my success came later in life because what, what I want to do with it is uh, a little different. I have a family now, and that's where I'm putting my money and my, my fame into is uh, keep, keeping that successful and uh, putting every attention to that, you know? Both of you guys have kids since yeah. yeah. Do you think in some way that has kind of diminished and lessened the, the trash talk between you two of you? Maybe. But we're both fathers. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, you know, I, I always have a joke saying that uh, it's kind of weird having a kid because now I actually have to grow up and I can't be a kid anymore, you know? So, possibly. But that's just me just joking around, you know? Your first Father's Day, right? Yeah, my first Father's Day, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, I know. Thank you very much. Um, speaking, of, uh, speaking of kids, you trained with Aaron Pico. <laughs> yeah, man. Seriously, a kid that, oh man. The kid's an animal, um, one of a kind. Just even, I remember watching him wrestle when he was 16 years old and beating grown men in, in, in the toughest sport in the world, in my mind, wrestling, you know, and just how competitive he was back then and just a mental athlete. And then getting to know who Aaron Pico is, um, the kid's a champ, you know, even if he's not it yet, he is. Like, in no time he will be. He's, uh, Technically, in the martial arts, he's awesome. Uh, mentally, he's the strongest guy I've ever, I've ever worked out with. Uh, he, he's one of a kind, man, for sure. How did you guys meet? Is it um, wrestling days, or how did that kind of um, relationship happen? No, he's a, he's a decade younger than me, so I never oh, met yeah, him. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> Were you babysitting him? Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You no, know, it's all good. But no, in, in the wrestling world, I obviously watched him because I was uh, – uh, a fan of the sport, so watched him and, and the name he was creating for himself. But I met him through uh, my strength conditioning coach, Sam Calavita. So when I came down to Southern California to start working with Sam, uh, Aaron was already working with him. Uh, Juan Archuleta was the the one that brought us all together. You know, Juan Archuleta is in Bellator, um, and so I've continued to get to know uh, Aaron Pico through uh, our strength conditioning coach. And uh, I've never worked harder in my life than with my strength conditioning coach, and Aaron makes it look easy. So. And I've always been the most competitive guy. Like I've always been able to like I've always, every every gym I've gone to. I've always been like, yeah, I'm the most competitive. Like I get a bad rap for it. Like I've always want to beat everyone at everything. I don't care what it is. Aaron's the only guy I've ever worked out with that's more competitive than me. You know, we could be doing a hand bike and we're racing to a mile, and he stands up like he won a world title when he beat me. You know, it's it's crazy. The kids, he's something else, man.
question for you. Uh, 9 a.m. or 4 p.m. weigh-in? What do you like? Um, I like the 9 a.m. weigh-ins, but I think I'll probably benefit more from the 4 p.m. because my opponents won't have as much time to recover as I will. I mean, I think I think I have it down to a science that I can recover um, and, and do the, my diets the right way. My my, nutri my nutritionist, Sam Calavita, has got us down perfectly. So I think um, as an advantage, the 4 p.m. What I like personally, yeah. I like to be able to eat all day long. So right. I, I make my weight instant. I wake up, I'm on weight. I'm, I don't cut much, you know. So. Well, what do you think of the idea of, of them moving back to four o'clock? I think I think guys are gonna have less time to recover. I mean, yeah. I think maybe you got more time to make the weight. Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, it just never made sense to me why guys would would, would were missing weight more often when it was earlier weight. And I guess not waking up and not having the weight in check on that really issue. Sure. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll, we'll miss a little bit, miss weight less, but have less time to recover. Have you been told at all what your weight is going to be for UFC 27? Because the fight is coming up pretty, pretty quick. That's seven weeks. No, I haven't, been, I haven't been told. I'm sure I'll see what the show's in front of me. The other thing, I, my weight's in check, so I'm not really too worried about it. Whatever way they decide to go with it, I'll be fine. Are you surprised that, that Don Cruz, you're talking about him before, hasn't, hasn't fought since that since that Cody fight? And was he ever on the table for an opponent for you for the title? I, no, I'm not surprised because this is happening. You know, he's had these long layoffs and he's been injured a lot. So definitely not a surprise, but uh, his name will always be up there because of what he's done, you know, so in the fight that we have in, in uh, controversial uh, decision in my mind. So yeah, I mean, he'll always be up there, but not, not a surprise that he hasn't fought. Do you feel like you'll probably see him still down the line and that'll still be a, a fight for you? Maybe, man. He's still got to come back and prove himself, you know? There's no way I'm giving him a rematch without fighting someone else, you know? I mean, that guy made me go through the, the through the ranks, so we'll see. <laughs> Not that you want to consider losing, but, I mean, a trilogy fight would happen for sure, I would imagine, if... if Oh, there's no, there's no, no trilogy. I'm winning. Yeah. There's no ifs ands or buts. Is there any significance to the necklace, the pendant? Oh uh, no, my wife bought it for me. It's just a uh, Hercules. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't sure. Yeah. And I was wondering if you were a natural blonde, but you are because your eyebrows are blonde. I yeah. feel like you're loving South Southern California. Yeah, the tan and the blonde hair has <laughs> definitely come out being in Southern California. Um, no, natural. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. How did I had this killer show shirt? Sure. Uh, Picture of you as a kid, right? Oh yeah, that was a joke, man. I started off as a joke. My manager, People it. I know, <laughs> my ma my manager uh, was like making my website, and he was like making up some mocks of T-shirts, and that was like just a joke he put it on there. And my wife's like, oh, I want that shirt. Can you ask him to like really make that? I want that shirt. He's like, dude, we should put it out there and see if it does. I was like, no, don't do that. Like, I told him no. I didn't want him to do it. And we posted it, and everyone wanted it, so we decided to make some limited edition of them. You know, so did it sell out? Oh yeah. Instant, like within 20 hours. Nice, nice. Are you going to print more or is that, is that it? Oh, uh, I think we'll put printer maybe a little more closer to the fight. I mean, you mentioned this a little bit before. You mentioned um, Marlon Marais's uh, victory and stuff. So when you look at the top of the ladder and stuff, a lot of those people you have fought, um, but is he somebody that you figure is due for a title shot? I mean, once you beat Cody, you would you would entertain Marais next or what? I mean, possibly. I mean, he does have a loss against uh, Simsa as well too, so yeah. it's always like that. A weird situation, but yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. He's, he's got to keep your eye on him, right? He's looking impressive. He was impressive before he got in the UFC, so it's a guy that me and Dwayne have definitely looked into. Yeah. yeah. But would you rather stay at 35 or look for a super fight? I, mean, I would love to fight Demetrius Johnson. Yeah, of course. You know, I mean, that's the fight I've been chasing now. But look, man, if I'm healthy, I'm training, I'll fight. Whoever's in front of me, you know, I don't want to lay. I don't want. I don't want to wait too long. And you mentioned before that you can make 25. Yeah. So are you certain of that? 100. Yeah. percent Yeah. Yeah. I, so I was told like last summer when Cody pulled out of the fight, Dana told me like, all right, you want Demetrius Johnson? That fight's like, gonna happen. I had three weeks, and I got my weight down to waking up at 140 pounds, and I was not, you know. That's what DJ walked around that. Exactly. Like, basically. Yeah, I was waking up in the morning 140 pounds. So. Would you also fight him if he came up? Like, let's say you're 25. Yeah, I mean, I, absolutely. I would love to do it at 25 because I don't want the excuse of me being the bigger man. You know, I don't want like, oh, the only reason why he beat me is because he's bigger than me. I can make your weight. I'm not bigger than you. You know, so that's, that's why I want to put that way. Would you consider a non-title fighter 125 just to prove that you made that you can make the weight? Sure. I mean, as long as I'm getting paid as a champion. <laughs> that that seems you know to be I mean? one of the stipulations that he doesn't want to take the fight unless you can prove. He's going to create all these stipulations. I think it's more of not wanting to take the fight, and it's always, it's always something. Yeah. What do you want? 
Um, I'm so as of now at where I'm at camp right now, I'm putting continuing to try to put weight on, like good lean weight. Um, right now I'm waking up, you know, from 53 to 955, just depends. You know, but that's me trying hard and eating a lot and, and, and lifting high heavy. So. And then at what point do you kind of start to taper off? Um, I'd have to ask my coach. Uh, he has me taper off a little bit sooner, um, but that's because we're putting on some solid mass now. My, my body composition is completely different. I mean, I walk around with like 6% body fat now, so it's, it's a little bit different. It takes it takes a little bit more time to lose muscle than it would to lose fat. You know? And what do you like arrive at like uh, the fight we got like on Tuesday? Shoot, I used to show up a little bit heavier than him too, so I'll probably have to mess with 10 pounds. Barely, not even that much water, but it's pretty. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of water, yeah. Um, obviously, there's some big fights going on before your fight. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking to be a champ champ someday. Do you think yeah, DC's going to get it done, or do you think he can beat Steve Bay? I actually do, yeah. I've been picking I've been picking DC to win. Um, great fight. A lot of respect for Steve Bay as well. I just think that he's never seen the wrestling that Daniel's going to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think Daniel's really liking the weight class, too. He did great at strike force at heavyweights. Um, I think he's going to be great at heavyweights in the UFC, and I think he's uh, the strength behind his wrestling is, is a lot to handle, you know, and uh, I think it's going to be, be enough to get him to win. Cool. Yeah, 